You want to work here, you need to wear like mini skirt, low cut shirt, and you need to work in the window to try to get more what? customers in. I took the job, Ryan. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Ashley, and this is No More Ink, the ultimate deep dive into Ink Master and its contestants, who also happen to be some of the best artists in the game. Joining me today is Coral Ladna. Hi. Hi, Ryan. You are stunning. You're too. Absolutely stunning. I want to know more about you. How long have you been tattooing? Um, how old are you? Um, where are you from originally? I am originally from Ukraine and I've been tattooing professionally for six years. Did you start tattooing in the Ukraine? No, I started tattooing actually, I did my apprenticeship back in 2012. I did it when I was backpacking South America. And after I finished my apprenticeship, I had stopped tattooing for a number of years for various reasons. And then when I went back to it professionally, it, since then, it's been six years and crazy six years. You were backpacking in South America when you were learning how to tattoo? Yes, I have a little bit not standard apprenticeship. I come to New York to study university and all that after I finished and got everything straightened out. Uh, at one point I was working in a different industry and I just like had this moment where I was like, this is not the direction of my life. You know, I just quit my job. I take a backpack and I go backpacking across all South America. I met another traveling tattoo artist and I always had this passion and love for tattooing, like from very far, this admiration. And kind of things just aligned and I just wound up following him around and learning to tattoo. My very first tattoo I did in Colombia and I just like would meet art scenes and other people who were traveling and I'd be like, hey, I'm learning and I just tattoo you for free. I need to learn and that's how I learned. I don't think I've ever met someone who had that type of apprenticeship. It's so unconventional, I love it. What a cool experience. You didn't go on the backpacking trip expecting to come out with a new career, right? No. It was just luck, yeah. No, it was just wow. everything just kind of aligned and it was just like it's one of those things where like, oh, this is the right path, you know? Wow, it, I did not know that about you. That's probably one of the coolest beginning tattoo stories I think I've heard. How was that experience? I think that traveling, uh, especially at that time as a woman, was already like a really risky thing that was like already put you in certain amount of exposure and discomfort. I think that that in itself was already complicated. Obviously, tattoo industry and being female, especially at that time, was also complicated. So it was definitely this constant, like you're constantly aware of it. You, you understand that's just the, the way that the world is and the way that things work and you just make decisions that keep you safe. And I've definitely been in situations that are uncomfortable. I think most female artists have been and that's just how the industry is. I think more uncomfortable than backpacking, learning, having to learn to tattoo as a female in this type of environment. One of the most shocking things for me was actually when I wound up moving back to New York and when I started to tattoo again in a walk-in shop. The very first tattoo job I got, when they hired me, they gave me a dress code. To me, that was more shocking than everything else I had encountered before that. What kind of dress code? Like, okay, you want to work here, you need to wear like mini skirt, low cut shirt, and you need to work in the window to try to get more what? customers in. I took the job, Ryan. <laughs> I mean, I've done some shady <laughs> too, but that is crazy. But I feel like this is the kind of things that we have dealt with in this industry. Absolutely. I mean, the world is definitely shifting, right? Well, the industry is changing and is shifting and that's important. In terms of tattooing, I know your work. I knew your work before the show because it's so specific. It's refreshing. I always love seeing something I don't see every single day. How would you describe your style? Oh, well, thank you. And I, the style that I give the name is Cosmic Colorism. Cosmic colorism. The idea is that I use color to tell a secondary story about the subject matter. So obviously, ultimately, everything comes from the client, right? The client come and tell you like, well, I want this, this, and this. I want to represent it in this way. So I usually have very in-depth chats with my clients. And for me, I want to pull out their soul their energy, what story they're trying to tell on their skin. Mm -hmm. And I try to manifest that into an image where it's not just an image of like, oh, okay, this is like, you know, my cat. <laughs> it's also like, well, what is the, an energetic connection to that story, to that person or that subject matter? And color can say that, you know, you can say all that with color. So there's like a mood, there's an energy, there's a vibration that goes with color. You know, color makes us feel certain things. It makes sense now because I know there's all sorts of art therapy and everything that involves a lot of color because it does, color moves you. It makes you feel certain things. So how did you develop that style? Was it something that was always in you and you just had to learn the medium of tattooing or did your style develop as your tattoo career progressed? For me, like I have background in like design and architecture. So like this graphic sort of breaking things down to their basic form that was already like in my 
artistic language. So when I started to tattoo, like obviously, you know, I was doing more like, you know, I have Chicano apprenticeship. So it was like black and gray mostly. I actually thought I was gonna be a, you know, black and gray tattoo artist when I started. But when I was working in walk-in shop, I was tattooing everything. Right. And one day one client come in and say to me, I want a cosmic flamingo. Give me 45 minutes, come back, I will draw it for you. And for me, just this idea, like it come from this, like I just, you know, I kind of, I designed like that, like intuitively from like the vibe I got from the client. And that was like the first piece I did in that style. And then it just started to evolve and people started asking me for like that style, which wasn't even a style yet. And then I started to develop more and more. And I noticed that it, that is how I work with clients. And I started to push further, like, okay, like tattoos can be powerful. They can be transformational. They can help you transform your life. They can help you tell your story. They can help you take ownership. So I. I use that every single day in my work. So how has it been for you encountering all of these traditional like rules and standards when it comes to, you know, classic tattoo culture? I respect it. Like it's it's like the fundamentals of everything that we do. You know, I have so much respect for it. When I see super well done tattoos that are traditional Japanese or, you know, black and gray, whatever the rules are, I'm like, wow, like I'm in awe. This is like for me mastery. Obviously skin have certain rules. It's just same like art, right? Like so we had like, you know, traditional form or art academy and then you have modernism which starts to break down the academy. It's the same with tattooing. I mean, we have the fundamentals, the traditional academy of tattooing, and now in the modern world, we're having the breakdown of the rules. It's just like, you know, art history, just tattoo history. Absolutely. It's happening, but you have to understand and you have to respect all art forms, all tattoo forms. For me, I love all of them. I am familiar with your work and have been for a while. I would love to share some of your portfolio with the world. And we can go back and look through a couple of tattoos that you did prior to the competition. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right, let's check out some of these tattoos. Wow. Okay, I have seen this tattoo before and it's definitely one of my favorites that you have done. I really, really love it. I love all the planes on the face and how they're separated with the pink coming up. It's sick. So tell me about this design. All my work comes from essentially, it's like this conversation I have with my clients. I'm like, okay, so what do you want to get? And for my clients, it was like this whole story of like, I want like these girls smoking, but I don't want it just to be about smoking. It should be just about dreaming and creating this alternate reality and then connecting with like our dreams from our childhood into who we are today. So my client, he have like this whole elaborate sort of concept and I kind of like pull more of this from him. And then he tell me like, oh, you know what? Like when I was a kid, I have this like toy hippopotamus Hippo. and it was purple. And then we were just started talking about like memories and dreams and childhood and manifesting. And it just, everything just kind of come together. Yeah. And so the idea is just like that. It's just like, you know, the dream world that we create, right? Like that's, that's really what it came from. So like these colors to me, like obviously the purple was a choice because it was like this connection that, that he have with a purple hippo. It has to be a purple hippo. I don't know where we're gonna put this purple hippo, but it has to be in there. It's and so random, someone being like, I wanna, okay, I want a face that's smoking with planets and a purple hippo. If that was a, a, <laughs> a skull pick, people would be like, no, not me. And you figured it out. This reminds me of Key West for some reason or something. This one's, I think, <laughs> probably tropical. this one. Yeah, very, very tropical. Yeah, very super happy tropical. I like how this one is separated, but you still still have these ombres and fades as well. In the Bird of Paradise, how you have like the bright green going into the deeper, going into the aqua, it's subtle. So for something like this, someone will come to you and say like, I want a little bird and a bird of paradise. And you just, your brain just does this to it? Like your brain just figures it out? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, sometimes the conversations are like, I want to represent this concept. Sometimes it's like that, it's very abstract. It's like, I want something that represents freedom. I want something that represents beauty. <laughs> I want, I like this, this, and this. And then I get for me to deduct like kind of their idea into something tangible. But yeah, the colors too. And like it, I really do transliterate color based on like the person and right. like their voice and their energy and what they like. And sometimes it'll be a limited palette of like, we'll only do blues or like, we'll only do like, you know, warm colors. And sometimes it's like every, everything and all together, you know? So a color really, it plays a big role. I mean, in this case, it's like a tropical bird with a tropical flower. Of course, it's gonna be all the colors, yeah. but, but breaking it down basically to its essential element so it's readable like right away you know exactly what it is there's no question when your clients come to you do they give you like free reign yes and no sometimes they're like i love your style i like this this and this because they kind of know more or less that's how i work but sometimes like they'll be particularly picky about like their vision but then when we start and that's why for me like having that consultation having that talk is really important because it's like we're creating a relationship of trust right it's like i'm here to tell your story 
I'm not trying to tell my story. I'm gonna just tell it in my language. I love it, like a translator. So my client, she just tell me the story about how like, well, she just comes to me and she's like, I want a tiger. And then I sit down and I'm like, hey, you know, why? What this means to you? And she's like, well, for me, it's like, oh, it's always been this symbol of like female power in my family. And I've just been going through this hard time and I want something that's gonna make me feel powerful. For me, right away come this image of like, well, she is powerful, but her power is in this thing that she's trying to hide behind. It's not this mask. Right. So I wanted to show the story of the fact that like what we think makes us powerful these things that we try to put to make ourselves look strong isn't our strength our strength is what is inside our strength sometimes is our chaos isn't that crazy how art can be translated into so many different things because i'm sure everyone that looks at a tattoo like this they see it and they instantaneously like relate it to something they feel in their own life it's a beautiful thing it's whatever you want it to be you know however you translate it i love that this week specifically with the skull pick. This one was a doozy. First of all, 360 wraparound tattoos all of the way around. They have to look good and be perfect from every angle. You will have six hours to create amazing tattoos that wrap completely around your canvas's body. And you got probably one of the toughest canvases. Did you feel like that was an intentional move. The whole thing was challenging all around. I feel like I got targeted right off the first skull picks. I felt like somebody didn't want me there. <laughs> I think the biggest challenge for me is the fact that like with both skull picks and especially with this last one, like I feel like I got so much in my head and I just panicked. All my creativity kind of goes out the window and evaporates. Right away, as soon as after the tattoo is complete, I come up maybe with 30 other solutions that would have been more successful. I tried to do it in a way that was not expecting, right? I didn't want to do the armband. Like I probably could have done a perfect armband. I actually went from a period in my tattoo career where I was doing a lot of 360 armbands. Since I'm Ukrainian, a lot of our clients, they request these type of 360 armbands with embroidery. It's like a very traditional tattoo. There's probably a good two years when I was doing them all like once a week. I probably would have been better off doing something like that. But I decided to go completely off the deep end and wow, the judges was something that was going to be a creative solution and right. that's when I went too big, I went too complex, I rushed, I spent too much time on the stencil, I didn't have time to make the best tattoo I could. The skin of the canvas also didn't help me, you know, lifestyle makes a big difference in skin. So it was just this, you know, avalanche. Not everyone understands the simple fact that like lifestyle is huge when it comes to skin. Even sometimes I think the, the people's diet and the way they eat and take care of their body affects how a tattoo goes in the skin. For everybody at home watching that might not understand the difficulty of tattooing on, on really tanned skin, you wanna talk a little bit about um, why that's tough and, and what makes that type of skin so hard to tattoo? It's not the tone, it's the actual texture of the skin. So that particular canvas, he have a job that requires him to work hours and hours and hours outside. You're working with skin that is tan, that is essentially the entire epidermis is essentially burned. And so you have skin that is not very elastic and skin that is very dehydrated. I'm worried that all my colors are not going to go into the skin and it's gonna look patchy. So it's very difficult to put pigment into skin like that. The softer the skin is, the more hydrated it is, the more collagen it has, the easier it is to work on. Coming into Ink Master, the challenges that you got and the skull picks that you got and the, the critiques that you got, it, it was rough for you. You had a rough run. How did it feel getting critiqued on those tattoos considering they're not what you love to do the most? There's not too many solid areas of black, colors patchy. For me, it's kind of a chaotic mess. Well, I think that any time that you're in a situation where you have timing and stress, like you're, some people perform well under those circumstances. I don't necessarily, I've learned that. Uh, but I think that in the situation of Ink Master, you have this also this crazy, incredible, one time in a lifetime opportunity to grow. And for me, as difficult as it was emotionally to get up there and be vulnerable, I also was like so grateful every second of being on there because I feel like 
I got these critiques that weren't easy, but they made me reevaluate the way I work, the way that I think as an artist and about myself as well. For me, it was like hard, emotional, but I was like, wow, I'm so grateful to be here. I'm grateful to hear like your criticism, Nico criticism, DJ criticism. It makes you look at your work differently. It makes you think about things that maybe you don't think about. And as an artist, that is something you don't necessarily get that in your studio or from your clients. And I'm not saying that you plateau, because obviously you should be able to push yourself all the time, but in that environment, like it's this unique opportunity to also hear criticism of other people's work. And if you take it the right way, you take it as like medicine almost. It's like drinking green juice, right? <laughs> it doesn't always taste good, but it makes you healthy. It heals you in the end. That being said, you want to play a game? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, let's play a game. I thought the challenges were done. <laughs> Surprise. Okay, Coral, so this game is simple. It's called the Sketch It Challenge. You're gonna get a word, you're gonna sketch it, and I'm gonna try to guess what the heck it is that you're drawing. Does that sound good? Sounds good. I love this game. It's a shark. It's the angry beaver. It's a guy looking in the window trying to get a free tattoo. Is it money? It can make money. It can make money? Mm -hmm. Something that makes a lot of money. An apprentice? No. <laughs> now, let me give you a hint. It's okay. two words. It's more like a concept. Teenagers? It's a very I abstract like concept, actually. Can I have another hint? I'm gonna give you the first letter of the first word. Okay. P. P. Think about modern art, Ryan. Pop art? Yes. Oh, <laughs> it does make a lot of money. It does. I don't get it, but. All right, I'm ready. I'm gonna do better this time. I'm gonna try to make it simple. Okay, perfect. Okay. It's like a flash challenge. It's quite stressful. Oh my God, I actually get to participate in a challenge. It's a banner. I saw somebody with a heart tattoo on them the other day with a banner and it said butthole. Keep this really simple, okay? okay? Got it. Okay, I'm gonna give you a hint. It's two words. Try to think less about what it is, but more like who could be the author. Author? Cupid? <laughs> Saint Valentine? Sailor Jerry? There you go. Sailor Jerry? Yes. That was the first thing I thought of when you started it. I was like, it can't be Sailor Jerry. That's too obvious. <laughs> so Coral, what does the future hold? Well, I just hope to be continuing to doing what I love. I love tattooing. I love making art. I love the process of being a tattooer, working with people. I just want to continue to do that, to continue to do what I'm most passionate about. The first time I ever saw you, I saw you on the news here in New York City with a project that you were working on. Are you continuing all along that one? Yeah, that's definitely one of the projects I'm continuing to working on. I run a nonprofit with one of my colleagues. We use tattoos as a way to heal trauma. So we work with trauma survivors and we kind of work in that kind of therapeutic process where like we really try to take that tattoo and have it be something that helps them close a chapter or manifest for their future. And the name of our nonprofit is called Ink Tensions because it's kind of the idea that, you know, ink can help you set new intentions. I definitely commend you for taking that step and yeah, putting your time and your effort and your talent into something that's truly so important and so impactful for so many people. It's incredible that you're doing that. Thank you. I will be following you forever. Thank you so much for being a part of all of this and the best, best of luck with all of your endeavors and everything you do. Thank you very much. It's an honor to have met you in person Thank and work you. with you. It's a crazy ride, but it's, it's, what, it's another one of those life experiences, right? Yeah. You're just racking them up, Coral. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for tuning in and joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to the Ink Master YouTube for everything Ink Master.